Hi, this is Tom Corley. I am the co-author of the book, Rich Habits, Poor Habits. I co-authored the book with Michael Yarney, who's one of Australia's leading experts in wealth creation. Uh, so Michael and I uh, worked on Rich Habits, Poor Habits together. We collaborated some of my research and some of his research and experience in training individuals on how to rise out of poverty and the middle class. Uh, we share all of that data and information in Rich Habits, Poor Habits. Over the years, Michael and I have received quite a few questions from not only readers, but also members of the media. We're quite active with uh, the media. So uh, I thought maybe it would be a good idea to share with you some of the common questions that we've been asked over the years. Um, so the first question is, do you, uh, do you come from wealthy families? And um, the answer to that for me uh, is no. Uh, although I, we were, bo I was born into a wealthy family. My father was a tool distributor. He owned the entire East Coast of the United States. Uh, but uh, he sold the business, and uh, the the buyers failed to make all of the installment payments. So the business reverted back to my dad after. Uh, two years, almost uh, almost two years, 18 months. But when he got the business back, it was a completely different business. They had really run it into the ground. And so my father kind of made a mistake in, in taking back the business. Uh, and, and within 30 days, the warehouse, his main warehouse, was burned to the ground. It was arson. And we know who did it. We knew who did it. We couldn't prove it in court. Uh, but uh, so my father lost everything lost his entire business and from the I was nine years old at the at the time so from the age of nine uh, all the way until I got really until I got married which was around 25 uh, we were kind of living in poverty I had to uh, work my way through college I was a janitor at a, a high school public high school in New York City I worked 20 hours a week that gave me enough money to afford college so um, I was able to go to college and um, we slowly broke out of poverty and then rose into the middle class so uh, that was um, one, one of the common questions we had another one is explain delayed gratification why it's so important to business success well according to my rich habits study it takes an average of about 12 years for a dreamer entrepreneur to become wealthy and they, during that 12-year period, they accumulated, on average, about $7.4 million. Uh, this journey to, to success with entrepreneurs, dreamers, um, it requires quite a bit of sacrifice. Uh, the sacrifices that you have to make primarily are financial. You have to learn how to manage your money. You don't have a lot of cash flow. Dreamer entrepreneurs, especially individuals who are don't come from money, and that's most of them, uh, they have to do it on a shoestring budget, right? So uh, they have to make sacrifices. They have to do without. They don't have the things that other people have while they're pursuing their dream. Uh, the other thing that they sacrifice is family. The dream comes first for entrepreneurs and dreamers. So um, family takes a back seat. And that means not having a lot of time, not spending a lot of time with your family and your spouse becomes really kind of the sole caretaker. Uh, so that's a big sacrifice. Also friends, friends take a back seat. Uh, your, your relationships with your friends, uh, str you struggle with that as an entrepreneur. Uh, so you're gonna not be able to see your friends when you want, you're gonna be working around the clock. And uh, so that's, you know, I think that's those are the two probably biggest sacrifices. Um, ha which habits are the most difficult to change? The poor habits that you picked up from childhood, from your parents primarily, but also from your neighborhood, your fa your other extended family members, and the, and uh, your the, your friends. These habits that you pick up, these poor habits, they because you pick them up when you're a child, they are really hard to break. Uh, you can break them, and I, I explain how to do that in one of my other books, Change Your Habits, Change Your Life, and we touch on it a little bit in Rich Habits, Poor Habits. Uh, we explain how you go about 
expediting the change in habits. Um, any habits you have in common with your spouse that you share, they're going to be hard to change. And if they're bad habits, that's going to be a problem, especially if they're poor money habits. You're going to really, you know, have a problem with changing those habits because, you, you know, your spouse, quite frankly, has a big influence on you. And, uh, you know, you're both going to have to be on the same page if you want to change your habits. Another question we have is, which habits are the most important for financial success? Well, this is a, this is a, a really a more expansive answer. Uh, you see, it all depends on what path you're on, what path you're, you've chosen to pursue your wealth. In, in my Rich Habits research, I uncovered four paths to wealth. There's the saver investor path, the big company climber path, the virtuoso path and the dreamer entrepreneur path. The saver investor path is where you you don't have to make a lot of money as as a salary or a wage, uh, but what you do have to do is learn to live off of 80% of that income so that you can save 20% or more of your income. And then the the so the habit that you want to forge as a saver investor is learning how to save. That also requires that you have to learn how to be frugal. Because in order to save, you you have to watch what you spend your money on. Another rich habit for saver investors is um, c consistently investing. You have to invest consistently. As soon as you save money, put it to work. It has to go to work immediately. And the saver investors in my rich habit study, the ones they were very successful because they invested in things that they knew. They studied certain investments. Some of it, a lot of it, was real estate. A lot of it was stocks and mutual funds and things like that. So they studied, uh, before they made an investment in a stock, for example, they might have spent three months studying that company. They studied the financials. They studied, they the under, tried to understand who was managing the company, if they were any good, and things like that. Um, the big company, Climber Path, has its own rich habits. It's really, uh, you know, there's a lot of politics in a big company. So you have to learn how to manage relationships. You have to learn how to build relationships with influencers. I call them power relationships. These are, are relationships with senior executives uh, that in your company, they could also be relationships with uh, other senior people in your industry, whatever industry that you're in. Uh, so the that that's, you know, building relationships is a big important part of that. Uh, you also have to, as a big company, Climber, you also have to be good at what you do. So you almost have to be a virtuoso in whatever your skill set is or your knowledge base is. You have to become expert. Uh, you also have to uh, meet or exceed expectations. So that's another rich habit. Uh, the meeting or exceeding of expectations means you have to go above and beyond. You have to make the people that you work for uh, glad that you work for them. And so they're going to reward you financially, try and keep you you know, keep you working for them because you're an integral part of their team. The virtuoso path, that has specific rich habits. In, in order to become a virtuoso, a virtuoso is anybody who is one of the top experts in their field. So in order to get there, many in many cases you have to go to college and you ha very often have to go to graduate school, maybe get a PhD uh, or a law degree or some uh, master's degrees and some specific uh, matriculation, you know, some, some particular subject. You have to become an expert in that particular area. Uh, and so uh, that's formal education. And, and so many virtuosos, uh, they, they, go, they go to school and they spend a lot of money and a lot of time. So there's a big investment there. There's also continuous ongoing investment that doesn't lead to a degree. It's reading books. It's uh, really honing your knowledge base so that you can become uh, really expert in, in you know, the, the field that you're in in terms of the knowledge. There's also skill-based virtuosos. The skill-based virtuosos, you can think of like the Michael Jordans, the LeBron James, the Tiger Woods. They, these are individuals who are just outstanding. They're the best at what they do. The Roger Federer's, you know, they spend three to five hours a day in what I call deliberate practice and analytical practice. Deliberate practice 
is uh, practicing something over and over again. It might be a, uh, a subset skill like hitting a backhand uh, down the line or hitting the backhand cross court or, or hitting an overhead. Uh, you know, you, you have to practice that specific subset of that skill over and over again. That's deliberate practice. Analytical practice is where you have a coach or a mentor, somebody watching what you do. So these individuals are giving you feedback. That's critical. That's, that's part of analytical practice, getting the feedback so that you can uh, pivot and make minor adjustments to, to whatever skill it is that you have. So, so the, the virtuosos have a lot of investment in time and money. And then the dreamer entrepreneurs, they have uh, a unique set of rich habits. They're, those rich habits include not only uh, really reading and understanding everything it is about your dream, you have to be become an expert in your dream, in your specific dream. And so you have to devote time to uh, gaining knowledge and growing, right? You have to grow. Uh, this is important because it helps you uh, to f see down the road any pitfalls or obstacles that, um, you know, you might face. Uh, that knowledge helps you dramatically overcome them. Uh, it also... Uh, requires intuition. Intuition is a rich habit, but it's it's birthed by experience. It takes time to grow your intuition. Intuition is really seeing down the road. It's anticipating things that might happen. It's seeing a problem before anybody else's. It's knowing without really knowing why you know. Uh, so intuition is an important rich habit when you're a dreamer entrepreneur. Um, so the um, the other thing I, I wanted to touch on is um, how to get rid of some some of your habits. So what one of the questions we've gotten over and over again is which habits are the easiest to get rid of? Uh, the habits that are inconsistent with the people that that you surround yourself with, they're the easiest to break. Uh, so think of your inner circle, the people that you talk to every day. It could be family, friends, uh, colleagues at work. They infect you with their habits. So uh, if you have bad habits and you're surrounded by people that have good habits, they're going to infect you with their good habits. That's why it's so critical to surround yourself with people that have the habits that you want to forge uh, because you'll be able to break the bad habits very easily. It's um, just by osmosis, really. Uh, and you'll, through osmosis, pick up their good habits. Uh, so this is, you know, one of the fundamental uh, habit change strategies is surround yourself with the type of people that have the habits that you desire. Um, what was the biggest surprise for me uh, when I was done analyzing the results of my rich habits study? I, when I went into the study, I wasn't doing a habit study. I was just trying to understand. I was trying to answer two questions. Why are... Uh, some people rich and some people poor. And the second question is, what do rich people and poor people do from the minute that they put their feet, they, they put their feet on the floor in the morning to the minute that they put their head on the pillow at night? I wanted to be that fly on the wall and understand all of their daily activities. What, what, turned, what I found out through my research was that um, the majority of the, the causes of wealth and poverty were habits. Uh, my, my research uh, identified habits that make you rich and habits that make you poor. There was a difference in terms of the habits between the rich and the poor people. It was like the Grand Canyon. It was so different. Their, their habits were so very different. And, um, you know, so those are some of the questions that, that we've been asked, common questions that we've been asked. And uh, I hope, you know, that helps um, you understand you know what we what we've done, what we've tried tried to do and accomplish in this book, Rich Habits, Poor Habits. We're trying to share that information that we have discovered over the last, you know, Michael and I collectively 50 years, uh, and we're trying to get that information out there because uh, if you can walk in the footsteps of the wealthy, you'll have a better chance of being successful. We're trying to get you out of walking in the footsteps of poor people. You see. Poor people, middle class people, they're the majority of the people. So we're trying to get you on the right path. And that right path is includes these habits. So the daily habits uh, 
are so critical to success. And Rich Habits, Poor Habits shares exactly what habits you need in order to be wealthy and what habits you need that will drag you down in life and make you poor. So thanks, uh, thanks for uh, you know being interested in our Rich Habits, Poor Habits research, and I hope this uh, information helps you understand you know everything about. Uh, what we're trying to do and, and how we're trying to help people lift them up in life. Thank you very much.